I'm going to tie the RS2, uh, a merger imitation, but this one is going to be specifically redesigned for midges. Now, I often fish the San Juan River, which is a tailwater fishery that primary food source for the trout are midges. And if you look at the RS2, it falls short in actually imitating midges. Uh, first of all, uh, midges don't have a tail and they especially don't have a fork tail. And uh, during the emergence transition, there should be a trailing shuck. So I had to address that with a translucent material. Next, the abdomen, uh, people use fine and dry, uh, but that doesn't give a three-dimensional look to the abdomen. So you want the pupa casing, but have the look inside of the uh, body parts. Now you can see we still maintained the segmentation. It's very subtle in there. So did, we didn't really sacrifice that to get a better, better, more 3D look. From a material perspective, again, if you look at the wing, uh, Antron is a very popular uh, choice. An improvement can be made by going to Zelon. Zelon diffuses light and Antron does not. And insect wings, specifically the dipteras, their wings diffuse the light. And Zelon gives you a much better representation of what's going on there. If we look at the thorax, people use again fine and dry, uh, which again is the polypropylene product, which, you know, it floats, so that's okay with our uh, thorax. But it doesn't represent all of these little legs and antennas and stuff to come out from the thorax. So natural uh, dry fly materials like possum, uh, nutria, muskrat, and uh, otter are a better look of uh, the thorax. I have in my vise a Team Co 2487. Now this is a size 20, but the Team Co 2487 is a 2X short. So effectively it's a size 22 and it has a 2X wide gape. So the gape is the same as a size 18. This gives us a short shank for these tiny hooks, but a wide gape to get better hookups. I'm gonna start my thread about an eyelet behind the eye with a flat thread. Now this is an olive size 14 knot. Now I'm tying an olive for a little better contrast uh, on the video here. So we tie just beyond where it starts to go down into the uh, curve of the bend. And this is where we're gonna tie in our trailing chuck or XUV. Pull off a, a segment of Antron yarn. We're going to use that for our trailing chuck. And then split it down the middle so that you have half. Take this and we're going to tuck it underneath our thread. I'm very close to my camera here for these tiny hooks, so I'm sorry if it looks like an earthquake is going on. But we're up underneath and we're right there. Now we're going to take another wrap over this. Get it exactly where we want, just where we stopped our thread at the bend right there. Now fold it together. Let's do a few wraps in front of it just to lock in the position. Now let's do a couple rounds, wraps just around the um, trailing chuck here to bring those fibers together. It's kind of awkward with everything so close here. Uh, Take some uh, Sally Hansen's Hard as Nails. I thinned this a little bit with uh, acetone. Uh, and we're going to uh, coat our uh, trailing shock here. 
So saturate it pretty good. Now this will give us some translucency and, and uh, we also won't lose our reflection from the trilobal profile uh, of our yarn. But uh, trailing chucks do not uh, splay out. Uh, that's not a very accurate representation. A more uh, solid, rigid, uh, translucent extension is a better representation. You may want to give it just a little twist as it's drying to give a rounder look. I've got slight tension on this while this is uh, drying. Now for our abdomen, I'm going to take uh, some pine squirrel off a zonker strip that has been dyed olive. And we're going to get the down fibers in there. And maybe some of the lighter ones just to give it a more depth. And we'll talk about more about that later. So with my little patch of dubbing I prepared, removing the guard hairs and cutting it uh, shorter, and then doing a hand mix, we're going to make our abdomen. Take a small amount of dubbing. And make a tiny little rope. I'm going to move my camera back so I have room to uh, wind my uh, dubbing on there. And you can see that... Uh, small little rope I have on there now. So we're gonna get closer to our uh, trailing shock. And then now we're gonna go actually underneath it. We're gonna go around it. Okay. Just like that, filled in that little bump there. Now the a trailing chuck looks an extension of what we've done. If you have to give it an, uh, another little uh, twist to tighten it up. And then we'll, we'll wrap it forward. And that's where our thorax will be. Make a few wraps and then we're going to tie this off. And I know this is a bit unusual and unorthodox, but let's let's give our uh, abdomen just a little trim. So the abdomen now that we've trimmed it down, it'll give us the illusion on the outside that there is the pupa casing, but it'll also show the darker inside where the adult is still in there trying to escape. And then also the extended excuvier, uh, which is our trailing chuck, just looks like uh, an ongoing part of the body there. I've repositioned my hook so that we have a horizontal surface to work with and we're not fighting gravity of things falling off our eye. So with a 14 knot black thread, we're gonna switch now and work at putting on the thorax and the wing. We're gonna use a white Zelon for the wing. First, I wanted to give you a little tip. Now, Zelon doesn't come in spools and stuff comes in strips that can be unraveled on you. So usually right in the middle, there is a white spot where they uh, grabbed onto it to dip it into the dye. Okay, you wanna just do a granny knot on that, and I got it next to it. Uh, 
That way, as you use it, it doesn't become all in frayed and different pieces. Also, if you have pieces of Antron laying around that are the same color as your Zelon, you know that your Zelon is the one with the knot in it. Now we're going to tie our wing. We'll take our Zelon, bring it underneath, and put the material on top, and position it not quite an eye behind the eye, but right there. My thread is very round at this point because I want to make sure that my Zelon stays there. Now you got to be careful when you tie the Zelon and your wing, you don't creep your thread back towards the uh, abdomen. Otherwise, you'll end up with your uh, wing, you know, in the middle of the ab and it won't look right. So right there is where we want it. We'll put another thread there behind it to lock it in. Okay. And we're not going to pull it to length, we're just going to cut that off. Let's do a wrap right behind there. Again, watch where you put your thread. I want a thorax of black and I have a beautiful possum here uh, dyed black. And again, we want to take just a little section. Um, and with this, we don't want to uh, take out the guard hairs because our thorax, we want the little legs and antennas and stuff sticking out. Um, we do probably want to cut this uh, maybe into three pieces and uh, uh, mix it. And then we can put the dubbing on there. And then we'll have uh, little fibers sticking out uh, to simulate the legs. So, and a dark thorax because there's a lot of body material in there. So here's our uh, possum, and I've mixed in some of the uh, guard hairs um, from the pine squirrel. Uh, we'll have little olive legs then. So with the dubbing, we are going to make a small noodle here. Now it's really easy with this to actually overdub your thorax and make it huge. So you got to be aware of that as well. I'm going to bring it underneath our wing. Do another wrap. And then we'll go in front. So the thorax isn't that much bigger. It's very subtle, but it is there. Hopefully you can see the uh, darkness uh, of the possum now. All right. Now we're going to do a half hitch and hold our thread right there. And we'll do a double half hitch. Okay. All right, let's uh, let's cut our uh, wing to length. Now this isn't a full wing, as as it would be on on a mature adult. So that would be around there. We're about halfway. Because our wing has not totally unfolded out, and if you like, you can round the edges. It looks good. So let's tie off this guy. We want a, a, a nice little head on him. And then our, our trailing chuck should be about a third the length of our fly here. That uh, looks good, and if you want to make it more realistic, just trim off some of the corners.
So it really did turn out nice. The uh, fly itself in the vise looks pretty good. In the water, it looks great. And then when you look at it from the fish's perspective, where he looks at profile and shades and translucency, it's exactly what we wanted, is a dark adult in here, surrounded by the pupa case, and, a, and then a same shade translucent shuck. So I think this will be a very productive pattern for you.